for a dam and to outline a, outline a man-made lake called today Buckeye, Buckeye Lake, which is still here. If you go there and go fishing, all the stone around Buckeye Lake is from the Great Stack. It was the largest stone mound in North America, absolutely huge. 10,000 wagon loads to take it completely down, if you can imagine. 10,000 10, wagons to take the stack down. And there's still some of it left on the edge, if you know where to go see it. When they got down to the bottom, they did find an earthen mound in the center, and they found some smaller mounds that circled it all the way around. Interesting enough, happened to be 12. <laughs> Big mound in the center. Uh, David Wyrick and seven or eight other guys, they went for it right away, dug it straight down, and they ran into a huge oak coffin. They took the oak lid off the coffin, and there was a skeleton of a, of a man laid out, and probably within 30 to 40 minutes, once that had touched the air, everything began really to crumble before their eyes. The bones just started to disintegrate. Did they close the lid real quick? No, they didn't. Dang. And then they found out that the coffin was laying on a platform of stone and wood. And so they figured, well, let's keep going. Maybe there's more. When they went under the platform in the, that stone and, and rock, they found... This, see this, this outer shell? They found that thing, this gray thing, the two, it's in two pieces. And that was held together with cement. And it took them some time. They finally got it apart. They, they can actually see it. they broke the top off, getting it apart, but it's been re-glued back on. You can see this in several places. And inside that gray shell was that black stone. I don't know, I don't remember how, how soon it happened. It was days or weeks. But uh, David Weirich finally got it into a man who took it to a person who was a Jewish fellow living in the area, a rabbi. And he said, you know, he said, I can read this. He says, this is Hebrew. And that entire stone has a complete rendition of the Ten Commandments from the Old Testament. I mean, t complete. Imagine that, Ten the Commandments. Bridge, right? The bridge version. Pardon? No? The bridge. No, that's what it says there. Well, I don't know how you... All anyway, of the commandments are there. All ten commandments are here. I think it, uh, it, it varied from the King James extremely minor. Not a lot of difference. Pretty much right on. What he pointed out was unusual is the way the letters are written. They're very, how would you say it, very, very squarish. And so just for a, a simple name, they called it block style. Well, they had, no one had ever seen block style Hebrew. So within a matter of weeks after all this came out, this idea of block Hebrew because they couldn't find it, then the idea of fraud, hoax, maybe Weirich made all this up. Because he was a guy who was, was a proponent of the North American Indians having a Jewish ancestry. Already highly suspicious in newspapers and academia as it was settled at that time. Even though a lot of people accepted it, a lot of people also didn't like, want to hear that kind of talk, especially not after all the problems with Joe Smith, Smith in western New York, if you get my drift. So anyway, David was a defender of the stone. He said this was absolutely authentic and that no one ever claimed that it was, you know, put there, you know, he was accused of him and his guys of making this thing and deceiving people. But uh, he was so attacked in the local newspapers and crucified that he started drinking laudanum, I mean, in a big way. And eventually, laudanum killed him, and we really feel he probably committed suicide because his reputation just went right down the tube. He was a surveyor. He was a surveyor. I mean, this guy was a professional guy. You know, he wasn't just some bumpkin out there digging up Indian mounds for relics. He also found this one that's shaped like the letter V, which you look up here, this is a Hebrew written in a more acceptable pattern, and it says the Holy of Holies, Law of God, King of the Earth, and the Word of the Lord. All that's on this yellowish-looking stone right here. He found both these stones. The yellowish one was found next to uh, the great octagon, which we're going to go to near the end of the day. And I'll show you on a map when we get to the museum where it was found. But this one here is about 12 miles away, maybe 10. It's, it's over headed toward the interstate uh, going to the southwest uh, from here. So uh, now, just to jump forward into our day, when the Six-Day War took place with Arabs and the Jews, 
Well, even though it was short-lived, a group of archaeologists went into the old city right away. They just felt, you know, we don't know if we're going to hang on to this or not, but they started digging at the Temple Mount. I mean, immediately. And I mean, the, you know, the guns weren't good. The barrels were still hot. These guys were in there. And they found some stones, and they found some writing on the stones, and what they found was, guess what? Square. Block Hebrew. They dated it 100 B.C. to 100 A.D. It was used for a very short time in Jewish history, and they call it Monumental Hebrew. So online, you punch in Monumental Hebrew, and this, this will come up. So David Weirich did not manufacture this language. Okay? But again... Every time something in North America is found showing contact across the pond, it's a fraud. It's before Columbus, therefore it can't be here. So it has to be fake. Were those carbon dated? Can't carbon date the stone per se, but because of the language, we can tell when that language was in usage 100 BC, 100 AD. Okay? What I find is compelling is yeah. what is on the stone? The requirement of the cover. Now, let me tell you. Temple stuff. Let me tell you the rest of the story. If you see that man standing on the stone, mm -hmm. above his head are three letters. You read those right to left, and it says Moshe. That's Moses. Now, if you go online and look up Alan Wilson, who's in southern England, Alan Wilson is a champion of contact there with early Israelites way before even all this stuff was happening, and he writes about a language called Qumri, or Qumri. That's the early Welsh, but it's a Hebrew-based language. He says, this is the Ten Commandments, complete, but it's written in Qumri. Now that's his claim. Not an LDS fellow, not a member of the church. And he says, what we call Moshe for Moses, doesn't say Moses. Another M word. Mosiah. Mosiah. Interesting. So, that's about all I can tell you. Now, what about the type of stone? Is that we don't know. It's never really been identified. Now, Scott, Scott Walter was here a few months back. He examined it. He said, as far as he was concerned, these things are definitely real and authentic. But again, he's a geologist. He can't date it. But he says uh, he may have an idea of what type of stone this actually is. And I think starting December, when number two year comes out for America on Earth... We're going to see, you'll see a TV program on his time here examining these stones. He got to take them out of the glass, I mean, you know, really examine them, and uh, it's going to be on TV. Maybe he'll tell us then what he thinks about the stone. So, 